Hey guys, Cool Domino here. Sorry about the lack of content lately because I've been really busy with other stuff and my computer hard drive is running out of space. But anyways, in this video I'm going to show you how you can wire up an AR timer, making an AR, getting an AR timer up and working, and to wire it to a motor starter. Now your motor starter might vary than what I have though. This is the, uh, there's the information right there in case you want to know. You can buy these at eBay for like 30 bucks, they're not that expensive. But um, yeah. Let's go over the tools and we'll get started. So the tools that you're going to need is you're obviously going to need your AR timer um, or AF timer if you have one. Um, it will be cool if you have an AF timer as well. Um, I don't have one though, but um, you're going to need a motor starter. You're going to need some wire, 16 or 18 gauge is what I recommend. Um, you're also going to need a power cord. Now the voltage that you want to put across it may be a little different. I'm going to be using 120 in this video right here. I'm going to show you how to wire it up to 120. So if you have 120, I recommend getting some lugs like this right here. Or if you have 240, um, I recommend getting lugs like this. But either case would work. If you want, why want to wire it to 120, or if you want to wire it to 240. But I'm going to wire up, wire it up to 120 in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead and grab your flathead screwdriver and open up your AR timer or AF timer. Just like that. Now, if you if you just purchase an AR timer or AF timer, you want to inspect it. You want to make sure there's no frayed wires, stray wires, or burnt wires. This one had a burnt wire in it because I think someone tried to use it as a motor starter. But that's not the case. And that's why you need to wire this thing up to a motor starter if you want to control your sirens from an AR timer. Like you want to control alert or attack, you're going to need one of these. So I'm going to bring this power cord out of the way because I don't need it right now. So basically, go ahead, once you inspect everything, and make sure and everything is working, or it looks, looks like it's working, I'm going to zoom in for you, and I'm going to show you a couple things. So these here are screws um, 9, 8, and 7. If you are using 120 on an AR timer, you will connect the power up to 9 and 8. But if you're using 240, you will connect up to 9 and 7. If you have an AF timer, and you're going to connect it to 120, you will use screws 10 and 9. For 240, you use screws 10 and 8. In this case, I have an AR timer, so I'm going to use screws 9 and 8 for the AR timer. So go ahead and grab your power cord right here. And go ahead and locate your live and neutral wires, which is black and white, like this. Where are they? You want to, I'll spark them on putting lugs on as well, and your ground is going to come in handy for in a second. So, for these kind of lugs, you want to go ahead and remove the screws completely. To do that, you just use your flathead screwdriver. And if you want and if you go on to ground your AR timer, which I highly recommend doing, I recommend taking out this screw as well. Only one of these screws. You don't have to take out all four. Now once you have all your screws out, go ahead and take your power cord, feed it in from the top or bottom through one of the holes. I'm gonna feed it down here. And you're gonna go ahead and connect your ground, which is your green wire, to um, the base plate, this metal plate right here. Because the reason why that is, in case if a wire comes loose and touches the plate, it would short everything, tripping the breaker and making this thing safe to touch. Now, what you want to do is, is grab your screw. If you're connecting ground, grab your screw that came out came off from the back plate. Put it through the lug on ground, and just to simply screw it in place. There you go, your ground is connected. Now always make sure this is unplugged at all times until you're ready to plug it in. Do not work with this when it's plugged in. Now do the same thing on screws 9 and 8, or 10 and 9, if you have an AF timer. Well, I have an AR timer, so I'm going to work on 9 and 8. Another thing to keep in mind is that um, it doesn't matter which side, is, which side you connect each wire to for live and neutral. They could go to either one. And by the way, another thing to keep in mind is you want to double check these fuses right here. Before you plug it in, you want to double check these fuses right here. You simply pull one out and just look closely at it as see if it's blown. You can hear these fuses are good. If these fuses are blown, I recommend replacing them. And before you replace them, look around the board and see if there's any shorts or loose wires. Um, this fuse right here is a 1 amp 240 volt fuse so it's fast blow so I recommend getting those if you need to replace them 
Once you confirm both fuses are good, you should be safe to now plug it in. As you can see here, the lights seem to be working right here. If I press alert, the other light turns on. Or attack, the other light turns on. The same light turns on. Now sometimes these AR timers or AF timers can have to be sold that the light might not be working or very dim. But uh, mine came that way. What I did is I got uh, the light bulb right here close as possible to the matching one and I just replaced the lens on it. I took the original lens off the old one and put the original lens on the new one and now it seems to be working fine. So that's wiring up an AR timer to power. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to wire it up to a motor starter and I'm going to get to that right now. So for wiring the AR timer to a motor starter or AF timer, what you want to do is make sure you disconnect power. You always want to make sure that this is unplugged at all times whenever you're working on it. So now, you're also going to need a jumper wire right here. I recommend 16 or 18 gauge. I'll go ahead and open this up. And zoom, I'm going to zoom back in here. There you go, and you're seeing the whole bus bar now. Now, what you want to do is you want to connect your jumper wire, whichever wire is live, which is appear to be the screw 9 wire. Your, your live could be on screw 8, if that's possible. But since I'm using live as screw 9, I'm going to connect this to the non number 9. So go ahead and loosen this screw, not all the way, but enough where you can be able to get your jumper wire in there. Go ahead and slide your jumper in. If, the, if it has these kind of lugs, if it's not, if it's the other kind of lugs, full circle, you're going to have to take the whole screw out, and that's a pain to do. Put this in. Give it a gentle tug to make sure it's in place. And now you want to go ahead and take the other end of your jumper and connect it one or two. It doesn't matter which one. If you're using an AF timer, you can have screw three as an option as if for a uh, fire call, but um, in this case I'm using one and two, which is your one is basically one would basically, or three would basically be your common for an air, for an AF timer, three would basically be your common one would basically be your fire, and then two would basically be your main signal if you're using an AR timer one and two would basically be your main signal, so I'm going to be connecting this to either one or two if you're using an AF timer, I recommend connecting this to three. Now go ahead and connect this in place on number two. One or two. There you go. Now you got your jumper in. Well, basically what that does is that when you press the button, it makes this screw live right here. So basically, anywhere between you connect from live to ground or live to neutral will basically be a closed circuit. So, now, what you want to do is take your longer wire, which is your, you're going to need either one cable of two, 16 or 18 gauges, or um, whatever you have. Basically, you're going to feed this in from the top, or wherever. I'm going to feed it in on the top of mine. And then what you want to do now is you want to take your fingernail, your thumb, press it against the, the, the copper, and make a little fish hook out of it. Just like that. Now I have a little fish hook. Sometimes you might need to use pliers, but um, this wire is thin enough where you can you just use it by hand. Do the same thing on the other wire. Now, what you want to do is you want to connect one of these wires, doesn't matter which one it is, to number one. Or if you're using an AF timer, you connect it either two or one. One is fire, two is alert and attack. That wire, now I'm gonna get the other wire. Now this is important. Make sure you connect this to neutral or to the other live if you're using 240. Which neutral basically be in this case, it'll basically be the screw nine or screw eight. It'll basically be screw eight. And there you go. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this up now, because we're done in there. Unless you want to move it to fire, or from a fire to alert and attack. Now what, hap now what happens is that when you press alert or attack, these two wires will be live when you press alert or attack. So basically you connect this to a Model A, or you connect it to a motor starter, or whatever. 
Just do not connect it to any big sirens, otherwise you might fry your air timer. You want to grab your motor starter or your Model A, set it down, and locate on your on your motor starter which ones is your coil. Now your motor starter may vary though. Sometimes I've seen some of these that run in low voltage, but I recommend 120 volt coils though because it's more convenient that way. And by the way, um, if you're running this on 240, I recommend connecting the other end to your neutral wire, not your live, because if you connect it to both lives, you may fry your motor starter. This is a 120 volt motor starter. But if you're, if you're running, if you have a 240 volt motor starter, which I don't have, you can use both lives. But I don't really have that. So basically you connect it to your neutral or your ground, your other wire. So yeah, now I'm going to go ahead and connect these wires, doesn't matter which way they go, to the coil of the motor starter. Now, assuming that you have everything wired up appropriately, you should be ready to turn things on. So basically, you do not want to touch the motor starter or the screws inside the timer when it's live. Oh, and by the way, if your timer seems to be continuously canceling, like you press alert and you get it running, and it immediately cancels after that, check the terminals 15 and 16, which is on this jumper wire, jumper bus bar right here. See if there's a jumper wire between 15 and 16. If there isn't, go ahead and put one in. And unless your remote, unless your wire running this remotely, then you might need a normally closed relay. But anyway, let's go ahead and plug it in. As you see here, the light is on. Now when I press the test button, the motor starts should energize. And you can see it does energize. Now for some motor starters, um, again as I mentioned earlier, they might run a 120 or some or um, other motor starters might run like 24 volts or something like that. I recommend putting a transformer in series and a, maybe a full bridge rectifier if you happen to have one. So yeah. Now if you press the alert button, it should just if you press the attack button, it should just turn on and off. So go ahead and press the attack and let it run through its cycle. Now go ahead and press cancel. And now you press the alert button, it should just stay on. You can see it is staying on. Now what you can do is you can put the two lives here for your input power and then the two lives out here for the output power. Don't worry, there's nothing live right here, but you don't want to touch these two right here. Um, you want to connect the output power from here. Um, you're connecting your input power here, which is basically two lives or three lives that you're running if you're using three phase power. And then you come and have the three lives, up the three lives come out here to your siren. In this case, I have it connected to a Model 2. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, um, please leave them in the comments down below. I'll be sure to answer them as soon as possible. And yeah, I hope this helps. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. And by the way, this is my 400 subscriber special.